air conditioning compressor. Why did it fail? Hi, today's topic is AC compressors. Why did it fail? We actually came across a uh, condensing unit with a compressor that uh, recently failed, uh, and so we decided to uh, take this compressor apart. And in doing so, uh, we discussed the various aspects as to what causes a compressor to fail, along with uh, various uh, different uh, failures that compressors experience. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, we think that you'll find this video very interesting. Importance of diagnosis, if not corrected, another compressor fail. Error in diagnosing, is compressor really bad? Who is diagnosing the compressor? What is their experience? I have over 20 years experience in diagnosing compressors. Okay, here we got the, uh, the compressor is uh, disconnected and basically uh, I've rechecked it electrically to see what's going on with it and it's really kind of rare that it fails this way in that uh, it's shorted and there's also an open winding. Now basically when I touch this it's going to basically show you that there's continuity from, from, this, uh, from this copper point to uh, either the run or the start winding. There it goes. Now that's the uh, that's the start winding making that noise is basically telling me that there's a direct short from that to ground because what I'm touching is ground. This basically metal piece is connected to ground. And so anytime you've got that, anytime you've got continuity in between uh, a run winding, any winding, there's the run winding. Now if I go to common, it's open against all other windings which basically means the unit won't run, but if you apply power to it, it's going to blow the breaker. This is basically your compressor. It's basically the heart of your air conditioner. If this thing fails, it's bad news. Because typically, especially if it's an R22 unit, it, it means you need a new unit pretty much because R22 is being phased out. So this unit was just slightly, just slightly over 10 years old, so it would have been out of manufacturer's warranty no matter what, but being that this was a builder's uh, model, uh, chances are that uh, the warranty was at best five years because typically builders don't register the uh, don't register the units. But anyways, uh, we're gonna pull finish pulling this compressor out, and we're going to attempt to try to open it up to take a look at it first. That is basically the interior workings. Uh, you can see your windings. I don't know if you can see it with the video. You see the windings down in there. Okay, we've managed to dig a little bit deeper. And uh, basically, uh, there was like a lip in here. Got the torque wrench and got the torque nuts out. There was a lip in there that I had to cut away too. So this thing's really dirty now because there's a lot of shavings and whatnot. And that's another reason why a compressor is, is not repairable in the, the sense that you could take it apart and try to get in there and repair it. You can't do it because when you cut it open, you see all that dirt and grime. There's no way you'd be able to get it, put it back together and get it to work again. Even if you could weld the uh, thing back closed again, all this dirt and gunk would end up tearing up the unit anyway. So that said, we pull these bolts out. And this thing just slides right out. And uh, you know, it's got a little couple of feet on here. You look inside, you know, there's basically like a scroll type design. And that's basically why they call these scroll compressors in that how they function. It basically just scrolls scrolls around and that's what pushes the, uh, the refrigerant through the, through the compressor. And uh, so we take those pieces out to try to give you a better vantage point. There's some other parts. And then there's a valve in here. And it's plastic. So 
So, you know, it's fairly uncommon for, uh, for a scroll uh, valve to go bad, but it just goes to show you that if you were, uh, you know, you had liquid refrigerant slug in it, uh, it could easily break. But that's basically a mechanical failure, and this, this unit uh, suffered uh, what's called an electrical failure. And uh, so the biggest problem is, is that you can only look down so far to see what we're uh, dealing with. I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see it. But basically, if you look down in here, you can see the windings where I'm pointing. These are the windings. Now, one thing that's important to note is, is that those windings are covered with a thin lacquer. And that's basically what protects them from shorting out against the, uh, the shell of the compressor. Now, the biggest de deterioration is, is, is heat. Typically, you know, when a compressor runs low on refrigerant, that refrigerant cycling through there is also to keep those windings cool. Uh, as well as that thermos, that thermal uh, overload protector. Now, on this particular compressor, the thermal overload protector kicked out, and which would basically shut the unit off. But then there was another electrical failure in that the the run and the start windings uh, were shorted to ground. Now, to go any further, to dig any deeper, to see exactly why, you know, I don't know that we'd even be able to. Uh, determine exactly why other than I know that the unit had run for some time low on refrigerant and that's likely what led to the demise uh, in the system uh, you know temperatures you know during that time were right around uh, I would say probably about 95 95 96 during the day it's it's since cooled off a little bit now but uh, during the time that this uh, that this compressor failed, the uh, daytime temps were typically hitting somewhere around 95, 96 with uh, feel like temperatures uh, right up around 100 degrees. If you can see it or not, but there's dimples basically in the, as to how they set the, uh, set that, uh, set this piece in place, this mounting bracket, they've got it dimpled. So there's going to be no easy way to, to remove that thing, and that's, that's another reason why a uh, residential uh, air conditioning compressor is not, not repairable. Uh, you, know, it's, you know, when they fail, they fail, and you know, you're basically left to replace the compressor. So just to, just to give you a generalized idea of why, a, why it's very important to uh, have your unit checked and uh, make sure to fix those refrigerant leaks because you know if you run a system low on refrigerant there's always that risk that you're going to cause the compressor to fail because it will run too hot and uh, you know as you can see I don't know how well you can see it but uh, the only thing protecting you is a small thin layer of film on that uh, compressor winding and once that winding breaks down you, if you've got liquid refrigerant or oil uh, rubbing up against that, that creates a path straight to the uh, shell of the compressor, which will cause it to short out because uh, the compressor is grounded via bolts that, uh, that attach, attach the, the uh, compressor to the unit. So once, once, that, uh, once that winding, once that lacquer breaks down in there and uh, has a path to the, the case of this compressor, it's short to ground, it'll blow the breaker and uh, cause the compressor to go out. Now the other type of failure like I said was uh, a mechanical failure in which the valve breaks and typically that happens when uh, the unit is overcharged with refrigerant and uh, liquid slugging occurs and basically you'll get chips or cracks in the uh, in the uh, in the valve inside the compressor. This is basically a valve that basically allows or disallows refrigerant to flow based on how this how this thing is uh, turned in here and it basically just you can see it turning as I turn this shaft so you can see that it's full full well turning another failure is is the lack of oil now this thing's had this thing's got plenty of oil in it and typically when there's a lack of oil it's basically another form of a mechanical failure in that it seizes this motor 
And basically what happens is, uh, you know, you'll basically get the definition, like if a technician comes out to your house and they say, oh yeah, the, mo the uh, compressor's locked up. And basically what that means is, is all the uh, oil has migra either migrated or leaked out of the system due to a Freon leak or other leak. And uh, it causes this compressor to get so hot and there's no oil in there. And so it seizes the bearing to where you can't even, you can't turn this turn this thing turning you can't turn it because it's seized up thermal it's like a temperature probe and it just basically just kicks the circuit out and which in turn shuts the compressor off it's either in this or it's in this right here this this part right here I don't know for an exact certainty all I know is that it exists I don't know exactly where it would be this is the first one that I've actually torn apart I've seen compressors torn apart before but uh, that's basically the gist of it. Okay, we've got it a step further, uh, but just uh, as another thing of advice, it just shows you that this is just another lesson in futility because in trying to cut this thing, I was trying to preserve the, uh, the, uh, the power plug. And so basically I was trying to cut around it, but I invertedly slipped and actually cut into the winding. So. It's just, you know, it's just one of those things, but to show you, uh, let me get the thing off here. Yeah. Slides right off. And you can see I just cut around to basically try to leave this intact, but I inadvertently cut the wires right here. So in all reality, probably not going to be able to, uh, determine what actually happened with this thing. Basically this whole thing could should be uh, filled with refrigerant vapor. Uh, let's see your suction port would be somewhere right up over in here which is vapor refrigerant coming into it. The discharge is up out through the top because this is where your discharge port is on the top. That's your discharge port. So that's highly compressed uh, vapor refrigerant, you know, high pressure, high temperature vapor refrigerant being pressed out, and which would basically it would come up through this uh, this hole right here and spew out through the top, and so that's basically uh, yeah, bearings are free, so you know typically I mean if you run the uh, compressor low on refrigerant. It's basically there's not going to be enough vapor in order there in order to keep those windings cool. If those windings uh, get hot, run too hot, basically what happens over time is that very thin lacquer. I mean anything can cause it to uh, break down. I mean you can see those those windings are real small, you know, real tiny, and so it really doesn't take much uh, to cut through that break through that that little uh, that little uh, protective uh, cover on there once that protective cover is gone then it's basically short ground that concludes this video segment of AC compressors why did it fail my name is Ray Austin with Austin Air Company if you live in the Katy Cypress Richmond Texas areas or some surrounding areas you can give us a call at 832 475 6895. Or for more information, you can always visit us on our main website at www.austinairco.com. Thank you. Have a great day.